we have used bridge application in the previous videos to bridge a user or bridge a call to external SIP gateways. Today we want to learn more about this important application in FreeSwitch. The first scenario is to bridge a call to an external SIP gateway. Syntax is to bridge to Sophia S slash gateway. They are reserve words. S slash gateway name. Here my gateway is registered and the name of that is signal wire. We have learned how to do that in the uh, previous video. And then we are passing the uh, number to our gateway. Let's test this setup. FSCLI. I set the log level to 6 and I call my number. As you can see in the logs, it's created a new channel and it sends to the Sophia signal wire uh, my mobile number. And my phone is ringing here. I will answer it. Let me just answer. And the channel has been answered. It's good to see uh, and try the scenarios one by one and check the logs because it will help you later in the troubleshooting. Also, uh, all the examples that I'm providing in this video, you can uh, find it in my GitHub link. So this is the first uh, example that we have just tried. So if you want to write them or if you want to know the uh, exact syntax you can refer to my github the link will be in the description of the video bridge application also can be used to call a user for example here we have registered uh, our zoiper as user 1000 and if you want to write a dial plan to call that user we can use the bridge application and in the data we can set the user uh, user number or username uh, here my username is 1000 and then the domain company a dot omit dot block. In order to test the scenario, I have registered two soft phones here. One is in my Mac and one is a, uh, in on a remote PC, a remote Windows PC. So I will log into the FSCLI to see the logs and then I will call 1000. As you can see, 1000 on the remote system is uh, calling and you can see the log. Next scenario is to dial multiple contacts all at once. Here we have uh, two users, user 1001 and user 1002. And if someone calls 10,000, I just choose this as an example, it will call both of them or it will bridge, uh, it will use bridge application to call both of them at the same time. And you need to pay attention that we used comma here. Using a comma will uh, let you to separate the addresses and bridge will dial them simultaneously. And there is no limit to the concurrency and uh, that's it. You can add as much as you want here. And the first one uh, who answered wins that call. So when you call to, uh, for example, 1001 and 1002, the first one who answered will get the call and the other one uh, will hang up. Let's try this. In order to test this scenario, we need three soft phones. So I have registered 1000, 1001, and uh, 1002. For 1002, actually, I use the uh, free soft phone. The name of the soft phone is Telephone. It is for the Mac. If you are using Windows, you have more options like LeanPhone. Of course, LeanPhone has for the Mac as well, but I prefer the Telephone here. It's very simple, and you can use it for testing. Uh, so what we want to test is this. We want to call uh, 10,000, and it will bridge to both 1001 and also 1002. Uh, and it will call them at the same time because you are using comma here. That's very important to take note of. Let's give it a try. Let's call 10,000. As you can see, both this phone and both the phone, this is actually for the phone, both of them are uh, calling. And if I answer one of them, let's answer, for example, phone. It, 
the first one who answers will take the call and the other one will hang up. We have echo because I'm using uh, one system to show you all the scenarios. The next scenario is to dial multiple contacts one at a time. It means here we have 1001 and 1002 and we uh, used pipe here instead of uh, comma. When we are using pipe, it dial one at a time. It means it will always dial 1001, the first one. If it is not registered or if it cannot reach to it, or if, for example, is unreachable, then it will call the second one. This is very useful when you want to uh, actually implement uh, H, uh, uh, failover scenarios, when you want to implement failover scenarios, because instead of these uh, users, you can use gateways that we have example in the next slide. But let's first try this one. So let's try the scenario. What we want to do is that we want to call uh, 20,000 and it will bridge to the 1001 pipe, means if the first one is not reachable, then call 1002. And in the first scenario, I both of them are available. 1002 is available, 1001 is available. Let's call it, let's call 20,000 and see what will happen. If I call 20,000, you will see that just uh, 1001 is ringing because it is reachable, right? Let's hang up. Now let's exit 1001. When 1001 is not reachable, it should call 1002. Let's try it. I'm exit the zipper. I'm exit uh, zipper was 1001 and let's try again. Now because 1001 is not reachable, 1002 will ring. This is uh, why we say we can use uh, failover using pipe in the bridge application. That's very useful um, item to know. As we have just tested, we can use the uh, pipe in the bridge application to implement failover. This failover is not restricted just to the internal uh, directory or internal users. You can use the same scenario to failover multiple gateways. For example, here I uh, registered uh, my free switch into signal wire and also I added a uh, gateway from another company, Telnix, and I'm using pipe to fail over between them. It means that when I'm calling my mobile number, it will always use the signal wire gateway first. If it is not reachable, uh, then it will send to the Telnix gateway. This is how we are implementing actually failover using the pipe in the bridge application. The next topic is timeout in bridge. Timeout is the maximum number of seconds to wait for an answer state from a remote endpoint. Here, for example, we are calling uh, 1,000, and we will call 1,000 for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, we will hang up the call. Of course, you can send it to a voicemail, you can call uh, another uh, extension or different scenarios based on your requirement. If you are using, if you have used the uh, asterisk, this is the dial timeout that we set in the dial application. Here, we are setting as a parameter, uh, for the bridge. It's good to mention that the uh, timeout is the time between invite packet and cancel packet. Here, as you can see, the invite is received at 6.25.30 and exactly 10 seconds later, the cancel packet is received. So this is how the timeout is calculating. Another useful feature of the bridge application is the sending ring back. And when you want to simulate a ring back for internal users when they are calling a gateway or when you are, for example, calling uh, multiple extensions at the time and you want to simulate the ring back, you can do so by uh, application set and then set the data and the ring back type. Another useful feature of the bridge application is to set outgoing caller ID. You can control the outgoing caller ID that is sent to the PSTN or your SIP provider using two parameters, effective caller ID name and effective caller ID number. Of course, usually you cannot set the name because the provider won't allow you. But, and you need to use actually the number for both of them. 
but this is very useful when you have multiple DIDs and you want to control what number to show for the customers. For example, uh, I have bought 909 and 908. I can set exactly what number I want to show when I'm calling this a specific destination. The last option that we are exploring here is no media mode. No media mode is an SDP pass-through feature that permits two endpoints that can see each other without NAT to connect their media sessions directly while FreeSwitch maintains control of the SIP signaling. So we have two phones. They can see each other without any NAT. They can be in the same network, in the same local area network, even in the uh, same uh, WAN networks, but they can see each other and there is no NAT between them. When we are enabling bypass media through, they will send the media directly between each other. So 1001 and 1002, for example, and uh, they send media directly to each other. Of course, signaling uh, still will be done by the free switch, but the media will go directly. This is usually useful when you want to uh, take load from your free switch, uh, but not very common because usually you cannot find uh, multiple extensions that are in the same network and they want to call each other internally. So, but if you have such a scenario, you can use the bypass media through option in your bridge application.